here we are with um, a report and we need to add a table and the table that I need to add is um, shown on the left so obviously I could just copy and paste the picture off the table into my report but you're not going to learn very much about how to lay out a table so I'm going to show you how we can actually create a table that looks like this in Google Docs. So the first thing we need to do is work out well how many columns and rows do we need in our table. So we've got one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns across, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 rows high. So let's go back to our document where we want to add the table, and we go insert, table, and we just need to move the mouse down to get uh, 12 rows by nine. And we click, and it'll add that in. And as you see, um, every single, uh, let me delete that space, every single column is the same width. Uh, but none of those columns would be wide enough to add our boys' names. So one of the first things we're going to need to do is start laying out our columns a little bit differently. So let's just take um, the first column and change its size. And you can do that by, when you move the mouse, if you move the mouse slowly over the column lines, then the cursor changes to this resizing tool. And once that's happened, you can click and drag and you can resize your columns. So right now, all we're gonna focus on is getting enough width to write the baby's names. So let's just try that. Uh, let's start with, um, we're actually gonna to need to combine these two. You can see here that these have been merged. So we can do that straight away actually. Um, all you need to do is select the two cells. So I've clicked in the cell and I've dragged down and it selects both of those cells. And if I right click or two finger click, I can choose merge cells. So that's merge them together. So let's type in our data names given to baby boys. And I'm just now gonna add in all the names of the different boys. Okay, so now that I've got uh, those names in, I have a better idea of how wide this column needs to be. And actually I can probably make it a little bit less wide um, and that would be fine. So I've got a little bit of play here. And then what I'm gonna to do to get these other columns to be the right size, rather than individually dragging each one and them all being slightly different, I'm actually just gonna click right up here at the top left of this bank, drag down and drag across so that I've selected everything except my names column. And now I'm gonna right click anywhere inside one of the cells, doesn't matter which one, as long as it's a selected cell, I can right click or two finger click and I'm gonna choose distribute columns and that's gonna make all of the columns the same width. Okay, so that's now given me perfectly sized columns. So now I need to put in uh, some of my data. So each of these cells here with the dates, you can see is also a merged cell because it covers two columns. So we need to merge pairs in this top row. So I'm gonna select two right click, merge, select two, right click, merge, select two, right click, merge, select two, right click, and merge. And now I can enter the data, 2015, 2010, 2005, oops, 2000. And into the uh, row just beneath that, I've got the rank and number for each baby names. So I'm gonna write that in, rank, number, and it hasn't quite fitted, but that's okay, we'll fix that. Rank and number. So let's take our rank column and just make it a little bit smaller so that each of the number uh, columns, we can fit that full word in. Lovely, okay. Now they're not quite the same size, but it's close enough, I think. So now we need to actually get our data in, so I'm just gonna add the data and uh, I'll show you how to format it once it's all in. So now that I've added all of my data, I need to start formatting. So um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the borders. So if you notice, I've got quite a thick black border around the table, and then I've got uh, the thinner border lines uh, or grid lines within the table, except I've got thicker lines separating each uh, sort of pair of columns that relate to each year, and a slightly thicker nine line to separate the header from the table body. Uh, and that just makes it look a little bit nicer on the page and helps us read the table a bit more easily. So let's do the thick outside border. To do that, you need to just select every cell in the whole table. 
and you will see a small little white um, box with a drop down arrow here appear and you need to click on that and this allows us to choose which border is it we want to modify and I want to modify the outside border so I'm going to choose this outside border selector and now you'll see that just the outside border has been selected. Here I can choose the border colour, I'm going to choose black but you could choose something different. The border width, I'm going to make it 2.25 so it's a bit thicker. And style, you could make it dotted or dashed but I'm going to go with a solid line. So now let's look at putting this uh, separator between our header and our body, this slightly thicker line here. So again I've just selected the cells across that um, sort of is the section, the header, the header section. And then again, I'm going to choose this selector tool and I'm going to choose the bottom border. So now the bottom border is showing and I'm just going to set this one to be 1.5 point. And that's a bit thicker. And now I'm going to do the same for these vertical lines. These are also 1.5 point. So let's select this column and let's choose everything on the right and let's set that to 1.5. Let's select this column, or this pair of columns, and choose again the right-hand border, and so on for each of the pairs of columns. Okay, that's looking uh, pretty smart. Now let's add some color just to help our um, readability of our table. So it's, it can be really helpful to use alternating row colors. It just helps people scan along a row and if you've got large tables, it's much easier to follow that all those numbers all relate to the same person's name um, because they're all sort of coloured the same. So you can choose whatever colour scheme you like, but I think it's quite nice to have a strong colour for the heading and then a shade of that colour alternately through the table. Um, if you use random colours, it starts looking like there's meaning in those random colours and that will confuse people. So I'm going to select my header. And now, to get my uh, table formatting tools, they might be hidden. Um, so you've got a few options. If you expand your window, you should see that we start getting our table formatting options appear. Or, if you've got a narrower display and you can't do that, um, this dot, dot, dot button is where all the extra se settings are hidden. So if you click on that, you'll get some options. And one of them will be this fill bucket. And it's important you use this, because this sets the background color. This sets the text color. This is the highlight colour for the text, but we want the background colour for this part of the table. So click on there and choose the colour you want. I'm going for a bit of a stronger green. And to help my text stand out a bit better, if I select it again, I can actually make that text white so it stands out against my darker background. And I might just make my background even darker just to make the contrast a bit stronger. And now let's select each alternating row. So I'm just clicking in where it says Jack and I'm dragging along to the right and it selects the row. Go to my more options and choose a lightest shade of green that I can. And I'm going to do that for each alternating row. Okay, and then finally we just need to do a little bit more formatting of our text. So I'm going to make my column headings bold. So I'm going to select that and make it bold and I'm going to select my dates and make them bold and I'm also going to select um, the headings for my data so my years and my sort of sub column headings and I'm going to make them centered so I'm going to go to my text aligning and center and I'm going to select the data in the cells everything except the names it looks a bit wrong if the names are centered but I'm going to make the numbers centered again it just helps them be easier to read so I've selected them by clicking, dragging and selecting those cells, go to my alignment tools, center align and now I've got a beautifully formatted table in my report.